Good morning, everyone. It's good to see all of you, and it's good to have all of you who are on live uh, Facebook or listening on the radio. We also have this week set up a YouTube channel so that later I can post that. So if you know someone who has a computer but doesn't do Facebook, you can let them know that they can watch our services um, delayed, but watch our services on YouTube. So they just have to search the church's name and they will find us. Our other announcements, we're still taking sign-ups for the listening posts. There's one tomorrow evening that will be done on computer on Zoom. And if you want to do that one, you need to let me know directly so that I can send the invitation with all the information to you so that you can sign into that. Um, but there are ones coming up on Saturday and, and the next week afterwards. So um, please continue to do that. Um, we still continue to delay communion because the stuff's not here. We will eventually get it. Um, and our mission of the month, um, to remember Christian Care and Churches United are going to receive our mission money for this month. And those are both local ministries that support those in need who are close neighbors right here in our area. I believe that's all the announcements I need to make. So let us bow our heads in prayer to begin. Almighty God, we ask that your presence among us be felt by each one of us here. Whether we are gathered in person or on computer or radio, we know you are here and we are thankful to be together. We pray that your Holy Spirit will touch us and change our hearts and shift our ways of living, that we may be transformed into the people you want us to be. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, birthdays, anniversaries. Yeah, I know we have one up front we have to do. <laughs> so, well, happy birthday. God bless you. Very good, John. Anything else to celebrate today? Okay, um, I don't know if we got new prayer concerns out there. I forgot to pick up the sheet, um, but we had a couple come in earlier this morning, um, one for law and order, that things can calm down so we can converse more calmly again, and a prayer of thanksgiving that we have power and nobody was hurt here, so with that storm that went through on Monday. So. Let us be in prayer. Almighty God, on this day we come to you knowing you answer prayer and that when we pray, we are changed as well. We come to you and pray for all who are sick in body, in mind, and spirit in these challenging days of constant newness and um, trying to find new ways of doing things. Our Health has been affected, our friendships have been affected, the ways we do things have been affected, and it has affected our minds and our spirits. We pray that you will heal us all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are in the midst of a famine or a disaster, and especially we pray for those who um, suffered through the storms in Iowa and Illinois on Monday. We are thankful that we just got a, an edge of that storm. There was plenty of damage we're still recovering from, but we are thankful of no injuries. And we are praying for those who are still without power and still struggling to get back to normal. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are victims of abuse or violence, intolerance or prejudice. We know that there is a lot going on trying to get us to hear and to listen. Some of it has not been helpful. And we pray for those um, situations where violence has broken out. But we pray that you will help us to find a calm place where we can meet and where we can talk and where we can listen to one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are grieving we include President Trump, who lost his brother yesterday, 
but also those in our church family who have suffered loss of friends and family. We ask that you comfort them and let, let us all be aware of the light that is eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are working in the medical and healing professions who are under such strain in this day, who are trying to carry on regular kinds of care that is needed and surgeries and, um, and therapies that are needed even in the midst of the COVID virus and special um, kinds of treatments and, and protocols that need to take place. We ask you to give them strength, keep them safe, keep their families and loved ones safe, and help us to be supportive of them and be patient in this time of change and strange practices. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray to you in thanksgiving for the birthday we, that celebrated this week, that we pray in thanksgiving for our chance to gather in your name and in thanksgiving for a beautiful day today. As we gather later this day to um, consider how to do Sunday school this year and when to begin Sunday school, we ask for your guidance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We come to you now in silence to offer you our individual prayers of joy and concern. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now our gospel reading is going to be read today by Damon. Good morning, everybody. Uh, so our gospel lesson today is Matthew 22, uh, 36 through 40. And uh, I was, uh, you ever have like a God moment where you just feel like you got to gotta kind of express that, right? So I was celebrating with uh, Donnie over there. I was, I was like, hey, man, I got a really short verse this time. And, uh, and I said, it's kind of, I said, it's one that I could almost read, uh, uh, have memorized. And uh, Donnie goes, pulls out his phone and goes, you're not going to believe this. Shows me his phone, and he's highlighted these exact, this exact verse in his Bible was already highlighted before I even started conversing with him. So I thought that was a pretty much a God moment about how much he related to that verse as well as uh, that, that was our reading today. So anyway, uh, Matthew 22, 36 through 40. And some of you might recognize this one. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our children's time. I brought a very old set of things today. My old softball glove and softball. Now, I got to tell you, I haven't used these for a while. Every once in a while, I get to play catch with a, a great niece or nephew. But it's been a while since I've actually gotten to do that. But I loved to play softball. And so today, we're going to talk a little bit about um, something I want to teach you about softball. 
Do you play softball? You do? I'm guessing you probably know more about it than I do now. Do you know how to, how to pitch? You know how to throw? Catch? Feel the ball? Run the bases? Keep score? You know what a ball and a foul ball are? You got the game down good. But what I want to teach is, what do you do when you score? What are we supposed to do when we score? Aren't we excited when we score? Or our team does, even if it's not us that makes the run? It's wonderful. We want to shout out and jump up and say, you know, we're number one. And, and we're all happy and excited. And when we listen to the verses that Damon just read to us, it tells us we're supposed to love God with all our heart, soul, and mind, and others as ourselves. When we're winning and we score and we're all happy and celebrating, are we often thinking about the feelings of someone who didn't score, who didn't do so well? Maybe not. The, the we're number one kind of, of thinking is, is doesn't match quite with that love our neighbors as ourselves and, and God with all our strength and mind. It doesn't mean that winning's bad. It doesn't mean we don't do our best when we're doing things that are competitive, like sports are, or other things as well. But, but we're supposed to be considering other people as well at the same time. So when Jesus was asked, um, you know, who, um, what is the greatest command? And he answered with those two commandments. He was telling us to be mindful of other people and to love them. And sometimes that means we have to understand what somebody else might be going through. We might be really happy. They might be really sad. Sometimes it might be the other way around. We might be really sad. And they're really happy. And so trying to love one another means trying to understand people where, what, with what's happening right then. So even when we're doing really, really well and we score and we win a game, we want to, uh, to be kind to the other team and to congratulate them on a game well played and to let them know that we respect them as players and as a team and that we, we care about what's happening to them too. So let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you on this day that you gave us a command to love you and to love one another. Help us to do that well, no matter what we are doing every day. Amen. Thank you, Carl. He knows that goes with my sermon today. Oh, spoiler alert. Sort of. <laughs> so our second reading today is Paul's letter to the Romans from the 12th chapter beginning with the 9th verse. 
Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for this day and thank you for these words of scripture from Paul and from Jesus. And we pray that you will let them and help them sink into our hearts and lives. May the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth be acceptable to you, my Lord and my Redeemer. Amen. There's a story that's been out for some time. I think I first ran across it um, as an email. Um, one of those stories that went around and got forwarded by lots of people that's now been picked up by Facebook. It surfaced again um, in some version or another in the last couple of weeks. But it's a story of a retired pastor who was asked to go back and preach at the church from which he had retired when it's either his 80th or 85th birthday. And when it was time for the sermon, he got up and he said these words. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. And then he said, that song sums up all the rest of what we learn about Jesus. Another song that's a little more contemporary is much the same. Oh, how he loves you and me. Oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life. What more can he give? Oh, how he loves you and me. Jesus' love never ends. There will never be a time when Jesus will say, I don't love you anymore. You're too sinful. You've made too many mistakes. You're too hard to get along with. You keep turning away from me. I can't take you anymore. Never will Jesus stop loving you. And we remind ourselves of that every time we sing, Jesus loves me or how he loves you and me. In a similar way to that pastor and those songwriters summing up how much Jesus loves us, Jesus sums up all we need to know about ourselves in the verses from Matthew that Damon read. When asked what is the greatest commandment, Jesus replied in two parts. First, he said to love God with all that you are, with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. Everything that is you should be part of loving God. 
And then he said, there's a second like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Hmm. The central piece of our faith is relationship. It starts with how much God and Jesus love us. But it continues with how much we love them and one another. So the central piece of our faith is about relationship. Our relationship with God, our relationship with God's people. And as we re continue with my faith journey and the highlights of what I have learned along the way, today we're going to reflect on relationship. Now growing up in the church and maturing in the faith over the years, I have found to my guilt and sometimes my shame that it is much easier to say I love someone than it is to actually do that. And that's even acknowledging that saying those words can sometimes be very difficult. Being a person who loves God and has committed my life to Christ has not automatically made me a loving person. It is something I have to keep working at. So this is what I have come to believe. That loving God with everything I am means I have to put aside I. I want this. I wish that. I, you know, all would be well, God, if I were only skinny. Or I would be happy, God, if you just make this person get along with me. Because, of course, it's never my fault. I have to put away all those I statements that come to me in my mind almost every moment of every day. And loving my neighbors, myself. Now there are some days when I don't love myself a whole lot. We all have days like that. But when Jesus called us to love our neighbor as ourselves, he was really pushing us into making an effort to understand our neighbors. Because until you understand them, you cannot love them. That's by my experience, anyway. And putting forth effort into understanding my neighbor's reality can be hard. It means listening to their experiences, their hurts, their joys and circumstances that have shaped their life, which may be very, very different from mine. And so sometimes even learning how to share experiences can be hard because it's like we're speaking different languages because we're coming from such different places. And to invest in that effort takes time. It takes compassion. And it takes a willingness to get to know them so that we can love them. And we remember the story of the Good Samaritan which teaches us that those neighbors we're to love is everyone. When we work as a church to make disciples of Jesus Christ, we're called to bring new people to Christ. And that means starting sometimes at the very beginning with how much Jesus loves them. But how can they believe that if we can't love them and they can see us? How hard it would be to believe God loves them when no human beings seem to be able to. And yet these are the people to whom we're called to witness and to serve, and they may not even know who Jesus is. They may not even know the real story of Christmas. They may let alone anything about Easter and Jesus dying on a cross on Good Friday. But we're called to love them. And we're called to have relationship with them in order to be able to love them. So let's cast our minds back on some of the phrases from Paul's words for us today. He wrote in chapter 12 that we are to love one another. We're to serve the Lord. 
We're to rejoice in hope and be patient in suffering. We are to persevere in prayer. I feel like I've spent my whole life praying for peace in the world. Sometimes I struggle with continuing to pray for that because it seems to get farther away sometimes rather than closer, but we're called to persevere. We are to contribute to the needs of the saints and extend hospitality to strangers. Well, strangers that kind of look like us and behave like us might be okay. But extending hospitality to strangers that don't act like us and don't look like us can be very hard. The next one that I'm lifting up is one that I really struggle with. Bless those who persecute you. A couple weeks ago, I talked about blessing and how that's a, the, a wholeness for someone else. Asking for wholeness, working for wholeness in someone else and seeing God in them. And that God blesses us with the continual daily work of loving us. And that when we bless others, that's what we're doing. Continual daily loving on others. And Paul calls us to bless those who persecute you. Doesn't mean we let them continue to persecute us. But it goes with the end of this list. I'll come back to that in a moment. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. He doesn't say agree with one another on every little thing. He says to live in harmony. Harmony, working together in some way, even though we're on different notes and in different places. Associate with the lowly. Don't think of yourself as wiser than you are. And as much as it is up to you, live peaceably with all. Paul recognized that we can be peaceable, but others may be doing not peaceable things that affect us. But he calls us, as much as we're able to, to live peaceably. And then finally, overcome evil with good. That thing going back to blessing those who persecute you. To overcome evil, we need to offer good to the world. As you've heard these phrases now twice this morning, what is it that you hear in them? I hear a call to actions that build relationships with one another. I hear that I am to value all persons. And just as we are called, again, we go back to Paul who said, God always is working for good for those who love him. We are called to work for the good of all people. I hear that we're to build wholeness, blessing for all. What do I not hear? I don't hear divide yourselves up over issues. I don't hear take a stand firmly in the sand and think you, have the, you are the wisest and you have the right answer and everybody else is wrong. I don't hear in that anything about putting other people down because they worship differently, dress differently, or live in a different economic status than I do. The passage from Paul is titled in my translation um, version of the New, New Revised Standard Version, Mark's 
of, true, of the true Christian. That whole long list of stuff are marks of the true Christian. I hope you hear the call to relationship in that list. Did you hear the value we're to place on our interactions with one another? And not just the surface stuff, not just the easy stuff, but being genuinely humble because we know that Jesus loves everyone and we're supposed to as well. Perhaps we should all be singing Jesus loves me in our minds whenever we encounter other people. Only I would suggest we put a little twist on it and say Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Yes, Jesus loves you. The Bible tells me so, so that when we are looking at other people, we're not just seeing someone we're trying to get something from. Um, we're not hearing just a lack of communication because we need some service work done and we're all frustrated because we can't seem to communicate. I, I mean, when we think in our mind, Jesus loves you with every person we meet, we're going to treat them differently. And we're probably going to take a breath and start fresh when we get frustrated. When we put our whole being into loving God as Jesus commands, we cannot help but love one another with the love of God as well. How can we love God and not love what God created? It just really can't be done. I think that's why Jesus said the second commandment is like the first. Love God, love one another. There's one more set of words I want to leave with you. As you can tell, I love music. But um, there's just one more song. I love you with the love of the Lord. I love you with the love of the Lord, I can see in you the glory of my King. I love you with the love of the Lord. We go about thinking Jesus loves you about everyone we encounter. And we see in them Jesus, God, the Creator, in every person we meet, I think we will transform the world and we'll be overcoming evil with good. May it be so. Amen. As we pray over the offerings you have been leaving in our plates this day, Again, I thank you for your faithfulness and your giving to the work of the church. But I want to continue these thoughts about love. So let us pray. Jesus, you loved us enough to die for us. And you ask us to love one another as you have loved us. Multiply these offerings that they may show the world that you love us that we love you, and that we truly love one another. Amen.
Let us be in prayer. Almighty God, as we leave this time, this particular place, and the space in which we live, where we have worshiped in your name together, we ask that we will take with us thoughts of love and the certainty of your love for us, that we might share it with the world and faithfully live respecting, honoring one another, and as much as possible, at peace. Amen.